had to keep myself from being like, Moida? <laughs> <laughs> and ruining your whole take. <laughs> Hi readers, I'm Emma. And I'm Abby. And September always makes us think about going back to school, even though we stopped going back to school kind of a while ago. It's true. So this week we're bringing you our six picks for Campus Reads. My first novel is Bittersweet by Miranda Beverly Whitmore. This book is set on a fictional East Coast college campus where scholarship student Mabel is unexpectedly befriended by her roommate who's very upper class, Ginevra. Ev, as she's known more commonly, invites Mabel to stay at her family's summer estate called Bittersweet in Vermont. That's where Mabel uncovers some serious dirt on this family. At first she likes being an insider, but then she realizes that they may have done some pretty shady stuff to hold on to their money and power. So then she has to decide, should she turn them in or should she become one of them? It's a literary summer read uh, with a little bit of psychological thriller sprinkled on top. My first book is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I love Rainbow. Mm -hmm. She's the best. Fangirl follows Kat and her outgoing twin sister, Ren, their freshman year of college. The title comes from the fact that Kat leads a double life. <laughs> Outwardly, she is a very introverted English student, but on the internet, she is a hyper popular fan fiction author. She writes fan fiction for the Simon Snow series, which is a pretty thinly veiled uh, version of the Harry Potter series. I picked this book because even if you have never delved into the dark and interesting world of fan fiction, there's something here for everyone because what this book is really about is the turmoil of leaving home, figuring out what it means to grow up, who you're going to be as a person, and finding your own tribe as an adult. My second pick is On Beauty by Zadie Smith, which takes place in the fictional college town of Wellington in New England. And here we meet two different families, the Belzies, uh, with Howard, who is a professor, and also the Kipps family, and Monty, who is the father in that family, these two are academic rivals. They get into massive fights about Rembrandt. And it's through these two families that Zadie Smith uh, just explores issues of race and class and academia and intellect and culture. And it's bitingly funny. Uh, so I picked this basically because I love everything that Zadie Smith does. And this book will transport you right back to the insular culture that was found in your college town. My second book is The Likeness by Tana French. Tana French is another fave of mine. She loves Tana French. Talk about it all the time. Uh, this is part of the Dublin Murder Squad series, but it can definitely stand on its own. Although, you should just read the Dublin Murder Squad series. She tells me this <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Detective Cassie Maddox comes to a crime scene to find that the murder victim is her exact doppelganger. Ah, that's freaky. Very strange, very weird. The chances of it happening <laughs> in real life are almost zero, but if you're willing to go along for the ride, this book is incredibly fun to read. She goes undercover in the house full of postgraduates where the victim lived as the victim to try to figure out who the perpetrator might be. I've read it three times and I will probably read it again now that we're talking about it again. <laughs> My third pick is Brad Street Gate by Robin Kerman. And this book is set on a real college campus this time, Harvard University. And Georgia and Charlie and Alice all become friends during their time there and everything is great until a few days before graduation when a fellow student is found murdered on campus. And what's worse, their favorite professor is suspected of committing the crime. So this book pops back and forth in time between when they're students and then a decade after they've graduated. 
And they're each still mulling over all of the uncertainties of this murder. You know, the secrets that they all kept, um, things that were left unsaid, this professor, what's his deal. I devoured this book in two days flat and really enjoyed it. My final book is Kearney's House Party by Maud Hart Lovelace. This is my absolute favorite book of all time. And if you look closely, you can see this is a very old book. I have several copies of it, and it is in print currently. This is my favorite one. It was liberated from a junior high school in Minneapolis in the 50s. Uh, <laughs> it is, as you can see, very well loved. This book follows uh, one summer in the life of Caroline Carney Sibley. Uh, she's a rising junior at what was then Vassar Women's College because it takes place in 1911. Oh. And I, as a child, thought that this is exactly what my college experience was going to look like, even though clearly it is not about a modern college experience at all. And obviously, in some ways, it's extremely different. I don't wear shirt waists. I don't go to darning parties. <laughs> I wasn't trying to get a husband at 19. But there are so many things in Maude Hart Lovelace's writing that when she was writing these books 30 years later, they were still applicable to teens of the 50s. And as I was reading them in the 90s and today, they're still applicable because there are some things that are just universal. And that's one of the reasons I love this book so much. That's it, readers. These are our six picks for books that are set on campus. You already know about a separate piece and Catcher in a Rye, but we hope we showed you some great new books that are set at school. And if you have your own favorite that you come back to year after year, let us know about it below in comments or tweet at us at Read It Forward. And even better, to get recommendations sent directly to your email inbox, sign up for our weekly newsletter, What We're Reading. Just go to readitforward.com.